One year ago tonight, we started doing this show. One year ago. Wow. Man, can you believe it? Woo. That's right, man. It's our one year anniversary. You know, I have to say, we got a, a very, very thoughtful gift. Um, Donald Trump was kind enough to talk about religion. <laughs> very nice. Which brings us to tonight's unblackening. Now, one of the key uh, constituents that Donald Trump has to win over are the evangelicals. Now, they make up 57% of the caucus goers in Iowa. And according to Trump, he's in good standing. I have a very great relationship with God, and I have a very great relationship with the evangelicals. If Trump and God have a great relationship, it's probably because they never see each other. <laughs> that can work, right? All right, so he is winning over some of the evangelical vote, but uh, I think he's bull about God. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. Are you an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. <laughs> probably equal? Am I the only one saying how transparent this is? You've never read the Bible, Donald Trump. I mean, come on, if Trump ever even touched the Bible, it probably sizzled. <laughs> but Donald Trump's got to convince the, the evangelicals that he's as full of Jesus as they are. So yesterday, he took his dual testament love and self to Liberty University. Now, the first thing he did, of course, was brag about the crowd size. We broke the record. You know, we had the record for about three or four years the last time. And the first thing I said to Jerry and Becky when I got here, did we break the record? They said, yes, you did, by quite a bit. So we'll dedicate that to Martin Luther King, a great man. Dr. King, how did he get in this? <laughs> what do you mean, dedicate? Dr. King's not your 16-year-old girlfriend. What does that mean? <sighs> well, let me just break down that entire statement for you guys, okay? Liberty students are required by the university to attend these rallies. So if Trump broke a record for attendance, it's only because Liberty enrollment is up. <laughs> Not because every student actually wanted to be there. So he's basically talking out of his ass, which, by the way, he wants to dedicate to Dr. King. <laughs> but Trump... <laughs> oh, there it is. But Trump vowed to fight for this religion he so clearly never thinks about. We're going to protect Christianity, and I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct or... Or correct, correct. <laughs> All right, Donald, you're being a little too general. You need to be more specific, Donald. You know, quote something. I, you know, I got an idea. Quote something every Christian would know, or even non-Christian. You know, something like 2 Corinthians, right? I mean, who hasn't heard of 2 Corinthians? As I hear this is a major theme right here, but 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 317, that's the whole ball game. Where the Spirit of the Lord, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And here there is Liberty College, but Liberty University. But it is so true. You know, when you think, and that's really, is that the one, is that the one you like? <laughs> There is so much wrong with that. You know what I love about this? He doesn't even know how wrong 2 Corinthians sounds, right? He's oblivious to it, and when people laugh, he acts like he was the originator of that mysterious joke. Uh, now, for you non-religious people, let me see if I can give you an analogy. Let's say you're a big Star Wars fan, and someone comes to speak to your Star Wars group. Um, in this scenario, you have no life, okay? <laughs> They say they're a huge Star Wars fan, that they have a great relationship with Star Wars, okay? And then they say, okay, I wanna talk about the farce, right? We're all strong with the farce, right? That's what you guys like, the farce, you know what I'm saying? I know, you're laughing because we love the farce. Who doesn't love the farce? Yeah, you're still laughing because the farce is awesome. The farce is strong with Luther Vandross Skywalker, right? Am I right? The farce. Okay, it's clear that Trump doesn't know the Bible, but there is a book that uh, he knows very well. I wrote The Art of the Deal. Who has read The Art of the Deal in this room? Everybody. 
I think three people clap. <laughs> Trump does everybody. I'm sorry, but I interrupted. You were in the middle of some horse. Please continue. Who has read The Art of the Deal in this room? Everybody. I always say, I always say, a deep, deep second to the Bible. The Bible is the best, the Bible. The Bible blows it away. There's nothing like the Bible. Please stop it. Just stop him from talking, please. I can't take it anymore. Come on, God, what are you out of lightning bolts? Don't you smite anymore? He just elevated his crappy book, The Art of the Deal, to just below the Bible. Can't you see what he's trying to do, Liberty You? He's trying to close the deal on you guys. He's trying to convince you that he's just like you. Evangelicals, you have to listen to me. Look, you can be forgiven for falling in love with Ted Cruz and Black Droopy the dog. <laughs> but you'll never be forgiven for falling in love with this troll. You know, it's probably hard for you to hear me when I talk like this. You know, let me say it more evangelically, all right? I'm talking to you, evangelicals. You know you make up 57% of the caucus goers, so you are our last hope. You're the bulwark against the creep of evil ivy that is Donald Trump. And he is growing wild. Can I get an amen? Amen! He's a snake in the grass, and you must cast him out like a devil. <laughs> Two Corinthians. What man of God can't name a Bible verse? How about, how about, how about Jesus wept? Because Jesus himself is weeping at how big an asshole Donald Trump is. Did I say asshole? Yes, I did. But God will forgive me because I'm talking about Donald Trump. I'm going to need another amen over here. Amen. <laughs> And who in the name of the Almighty doesn't know the New Testament from the Old? The Old Testament is the one with all the damn smite, and some of us knows there is a difference. What I challenge you to do, evangelicals, is to smite down Donald Trump's campaign. Smite it down. Give me an amen for the smiting down. Smite down the Trump campaign and loose ourselves of the grip that this, this, I can't do it. I will. Hold on. That this, that this false prophet, this idolater has on the caucus. He is a fever that must be broken, and the only cure is truth. Am I right about the truth? Then how did I not get an amen for that truth? Y'all don't hear me this morning. Now let's exercise this demonic abomination from a national conversation. Remove this devil uh, from, the, from, the, from the voting booth. Uh, cast him off. Uh, forth, cast him. Let me hear you say, cast him off. Uh. Let me hear you say, forth, uh. Let me hear you just say, uh. Yield, yield not to the temptation of Trump. But be sure to sing along your donations to the Nightly Show Ministries. No donation is too big or too small in the eyes of the Lord, much like Jesus. We'll be right back.